CI in under five. My name is John Weezy, and in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to the customer lifetime value prediction model. So we've been adding different models into the customer insights application, and uh, one of the newer ones is customer lifetime value. So we've already walked through um, the two different options that we have for churn, and now we're going to focus on customer lifetime value. I'm going to, normally what you do is use, use model. It explains here, you know, what the model is going to do. It's going to calculate the total uh, monetary worth of the customer uh, to your business over their lifetime. And it's going to expect certain amounts of data uh, that you're going to give it. So a transaction date, the transaction amount, and a transaction ID for all the transactions. Um, and then it gives you a little bit of information about how activities uh, fuel better predictions. Um, and a couple of handy tidbits here. Uh, normally you click get started and that would then walk you through creating one but since I've already got one I'm just going to show you that instead of working on it from scratch. So this would be the normal flow. You would first provide a name uh, and the output entity name that you want to use. So I'm just called mine out of box e-commerce CLV prediction. Once you've set that you go to your preferences. So the model has a few different preferences that you can set. Uh, the first is setting the prediction time period. So what is the customer's value over the next however amount of time you give it? So in my example, I've used years. Uh, one year over the next year, what is their value to me? Um, you could do a certain number of months uh, and so on. Then you're going to pick a, the customers. Uh, so inactive customers are unlikely to generate significant revenue, as it says. So what you want to do is determine uh, active customer spend uh, by looking at the last uh, amount of data. So in this case, we're saying let the model calculate the interval. Um, you could set the interval manually, um, but uh, in our case, uh, it's just simple to, to calculate that uh, and let the model do it itself. Then we're uh, choosing what is the definition of a high value customer. So in this case, uh, we're doing the percent of uh, the top active customers helps us determine the high value. I want to say the top 30% of all active customers um, is what we can consider to be a high value customer. Next step is setting up the required data. So here we've set up the data. I will go ahead and click edit here. Um, so I picked my customer transaction history. In this case, I'm basing it on my e-commerce data. Um, maybe I've got uh, point of sale data. Maybe I've got one large data set uh, that combines everything. Uh, so you can choose the data set that you're going to use that has your transaction information in it. Then you move forward and you set up some basic info. What is the ID that determines the transaction ID? the date of the transaction, the amount, um, and then you can uh, also provide the product. Um, if there's a product involved, in my case, we have a product ID, so I'm using that. You then set up a relationship. Um, this should be pretty straightforward. In many cases, it's set up for you. Uh, so all you're doing is saving it, but uh, here we're showing that we're con connecting the purchases to our customers based on the contact ID, and we're done. So that's that, that step there. Then you move forward and you set up some additional data. Um, in this case, this is to help boost the insights uh, by providing actual extra data. Um, and here I've decided to add in our website reviews that the person has done um, as act extra data that we can look at. So if they've provided a review, that contributes to them being uh, a better customer. That's, of course, optional, so you don't have to do that if you don't have the data or don't want to. And then how often do we want to update uh, the data? So here I've set it to being updated monthly. And then the last step is, of course, just reviewing the data that you put in and telling it to run. So I've already run it. I'm not going to run it again, but I will show you the output. So the output is similar to the other models. Uh, you get a score. And if you want to read about what the scores mean, you can click on Learn About the Score. Um, here we can see that we had a nice score A, excellent, and we break it down into two different categories uh, uh, for, in terms of value of customer. Um, so we have a low uh, number and then we have a high number. So who are, our high we said was going to be the top 30%, which is about uh, 1,047 customers, which means our low value is the remainder of our customers fall into the low bucket. 
And then we can see, of course, the factors that influenced uh, our model. So overall transaction value, number of products, and so on. So that's a quick walkthrough of the customer lifetime value model in Customer Insights. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll tune in again for the next one.